We live in a time of great change and breathtaking progress. The last century alone has borne witness to more innovation than in any previous age of human history. But serious challenges remain. In 2018, 844 million people had no access to drinking water. 1.1 billion lived without electricity. 2.3 billion lived without access to toilets or latrines. And at least half of the world's 7.3 billion people still lacked essential health services. For many of us, these problems are difficult to imagine, hmm. much less solve. But technology can help. Which is why, in 2013, the USPTO started Patents for Humanity to recognize and reward groundbreaking innovations that address the world's most pressing humanitarian problems in household energy, living standards, medicine, nutrition, and sanitation. Past award winners include Nocaro for a low-cost solar light for the developing world, Golden Rice for creating vitamin A-enriched rice that prevents blindness and death, Global Good Fund at Intellectual Ventures for a cooler that can keep vaccines cold for over 30 days without electricity. Winners receive a certificate for acceleration of select USPTO proceedings that can help move their innovations to market. These winners are here today. Their patented inventions do more than push technology forward and create jobs. They save lives. Welcome to the USPTO's Patents for Humanity Awards Ceremony. We are excited to celebrate the fifth group of Patents for Humanity winners who have helped transform lives around the world. Patents for Humanity is the USPTO's awards competition, recognizing innovators who use game-changing technology to meet global humanitarian challenges. I want to take a moment to thank all of our program partners. Thank you to the National Inventors Hall of Fame, who have graciously provided the trophies that were sent to all the winners, as well as to Michael Oyster, its CEO, who will be presenting two of our awards today. And thanks to the Association of University Technology Managers, or AUTUMN, who helped publicize this program and recruit volunteer judges from universities around the country. I also want to give a hearty thank you to all of our distinguished speakers today, including Senator Leahy, Senator Grassley, and Representative Roby, as well as our friends from the National Science Foundation, Director Seturaman Panchanathan, and the Executive Director of the Lemelson Foundation, Ms. Carol Dahl. Thank you for supporting this program. You will learn more about our inspiring Patents for Humanity winners shortly. Winners this year came from three categories, three in medicine, two in sanitation, and one in living standards. In addition to celebrating the winners, we will get the opportunity to see how their inventions actually work and the impact they are making in our world today. We'll conclude the ceremony with the Deputy Undersecretary of Commerce for Intellectual Property and Deputy Director of the USPTO, Laura Peter, who will announce our two honorable mentions. Welcome to all of you watching today. We hope you will be as inspired as we are by the winners of this award. Our first speaker is Andre Yanku, Under Secretary of Commerce for Intellectual Property and the Director of the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Director Yanku provides leadership and oversight to one of the largest intellectual property offices in the world and serves as the principal advisor to the Secretary of Commerce on intellectual property matters. Let me close by offering congratulations to all of the winners today. Their creativity and their dedication to helping those less fortunate is truly remarkable. Thank you, Shira, and thank you to everyone joining us today. Welcome to the 2020 Patents for Humanity Award Ceremony. The USPTO's Patents for Humanity program recognizes and honors outstanding innovators who create game-changing technologies to solve major humanitarian challenges. The Patents for Humanity Award represents the top honor bestowed by the USPTO to those whose contributions have improved lives and changed the world for the better. Over the years, we have witnessed many amazing inventions and met the people behind them. They have increased global access to technology, 
aided the impoverished and made the world healthier, safer, and cleaner in so many ways. This year, as we attend the ceremony virtually in the midst of a global pandemic, I think we can all agree that celebrating and promoting innovation is more important than ever. We are going to need creative solutions to meet the pandemics and other global challenges of the future. Solutions that will demand the best of us and improve the human condition for this and future generations. And seeing the level of creativity demonstrated by all of the applicants in this year's Patents for Humanity Awards program brings me great hope that we will prevail and indeed make it out better and stronger than ever. To ensure our continued progress, as a nation we must recognize the importance that intellectual property plays in promoting and protecting invention that changes the world. And this is what our celebration today is all about. We have a great program for you today. You will be seeing many impressive inventions and hearing from a number of distinguished speakers, including a few great friends of the patent system from Capitol Hill, Senators Leahy and Grassley, and Representative Roby. Six award winners and two honorable mentions will be recognized. Congratulations to each of them. We hope that their stories will inspire countless more to follow in their footsteps. Thank you to all of our speakers today. We are pleased to have so many great partners for this program. And many congratulations once again to all of our winners and honorable mentions. I want to thank and congratulate all of this year's Patents for Humanity Award winners. You've used your talents, your brilliance, your work to advance the environment, uh, living conditions, everything else worldwide. I, I don't know anybody else who can say that, and you can. And I'm hopeful that the uh, uh, accelerated certificates we're going to see give an example to the rest of the world. And we're making some progress, finally, on the Patents for Humanity Act. That's something that a Republican, Chuck Grassley, and I as a Democrat have worked together on. This is not a matter that should be partisan. We want it to work. We're going to be back in a few days in Washington. We're going to continue to it. Now, Director Yanku, I applaud you in the office. I wish you could be here in Vermont with me. I know you feel sorry for me having to be in Vermont, but we are working on this. We're going to make it work. I applaud your leadership. Thank you. Hello. I'm Mike Oyster, the CEO of the National Inventors Hall of Fame. We are proud to partner with the United States Patent and Trademark Office as a sponsor of the Patents for Humanity Award Ceremony, celebrating the 2020 awardees and their life-changing innovations. Since the USPTO co-founded the National Inventors Hall of Fame in 1973, we have worked together to recognize the most important element of innovation. The visionary inventors who have built businesses, shaped society, and improved our quality of life. At the National Inventors Hall of Fame Museum, located at the USPTO headquarters, we have inducted more than 600 extraordinary patent holders, from Thomas Edison to Hedy Lamarr to Patents for Humanity awardee Ashok Gadgil. The National Inventors Hall of Fame also operates the country's largest and most impactful ecosystem of K-12 education programs. In partnership with school districts and local educators in all 50 states, Washington, D.C., and Puerto Rico, we promote intellectual property literacy, and we share stories of ingenuity and perseverance, the same qualities that brought the Patents for Humanity awardees here today. It is vital as we honor the work of great inventors. We also inspire the next generation through your stories. Thank you for the opportunity to join you today. We applaud your vision to solve global humanitarian challenges, and we look forward to following the impact of your work. It is my pleasure to present Sanaria with a Patents for Humanity Award in the medicine category. Nearly half the world's population lives in areas at risk of malaria, 
and there are almost 220 million cases every year. More than 90% of fatal cases are caused by a parasite, and there is no vaccine for this on the market. Scenaria's PFSPZ vaccine was developed to address this and has shown 92 to 100% protection against controlled human malaria infection in clinical trials. This breakthrough vaccine intends to have a dramatic effect on the prevention and the elimination of malaria. Congratulations to Scenaria and thank you for your work. Kirita Johnson knows what it's like to have a child sick with malaria. On Bioko Island in Equatorial Guinea, nearly every mother does. In 2003, the malaria parasite infected more than 45% of residents. That's when U.S. energy companies joined the battle. Spraying of homes saved lives. So did mosquito nets. Educational programs and community involvement also helped. But for every control measure, the malaria parasite and its mosquito carriers had a counterattack. Without a vaccine to interrupt transmission, malaria wasn't going away. Dr. Stephen Hoffman understands that better than anyone, and he knows the statistics. Malaria kills more than 400,000 people yearly worldwide. The level of malaria transmission on Bioko Island before the Bioko Island Malaria Control Project went into place was as high as it is anywhere in the world and much higher than most places in the world. That's the face of malaria to me when I look at those numbers. It's not just numbers. It's the children that I've seen who died of malaria that I couldn't do anything about. Hoffman founded Scenaria in 2003 to develop a malaria vaccine. Some experts scoffed at his ideas. But in 2007, a vaccine was ready for trial. Added hope came in 2012. The National Institutes of Health in the US showed Hoffman's vaccine was effective. But would it work in a malaria hotspot like Bioko Island? Testing in 2015 and 2016 showed the vaccine provided protection for at least 14 months. In this case, Equatorial Guinea has been seen as a country with a big opportunity. A big opportunity to help our own country and our population, yes. But also an opportunity to be able to help all of Africa. Good afternoon. I am Dr. Stephen Hoffman, CEO of Scenaria. On behalf of our team, I am proud to accept the Patents for Humanity Award. Malaria disproportionately affects the most underserved people on our planet. This award recognizes the importance of our intellectual property covering the innovations made by Scenaria in developing a family of unique vaccines designed to prevent and eventually eliminate malaria. I thank everyone at Scenaria, past and present, whose innovation is reflected in our patent portfolio and the members of the International PFSPZ Consortium. Thank you to our funders, especially the SBIR program of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, which has provided the majority of the funding leading to our patents and to the U.S. Department of Defense. Finally, I thank Dr. David Dolberg, our Director of IP, who along with the team at Stern, Kessler, Goldstein, and Fox, created and manages our IP portfolio. It is my pleasure to present CSU Global with the Patents for Humanity Award in the medicine category. Blood is a precious resource in healthcare and chronic donor shortages are occurring worldwide, created to help patients with internal bleeding. Hemifuse can be used when there is no donor blood available and even as the preferred option over donor blood. With a simple push and pull of a handle, Hemifuse can salvage, filter, and recycle blood without using electricity. Currently used in hospitals in Kenya and Ghana, Hemifuse increases blood access, lowers costs, and supports faster life-saving procedures and recovery time. Congratulations to CSU Global, and thank you for your work. I'm Carolyn Urena, the CEO and co-founder of CSU Global Health. We're a medical device company for emerging markets, and we're proud to be launching our first product, Hemifuse. It's a simple device that can salvage and recycle a person's own blood from internal bleeding. What drives us as an organization is CSU. This is the name of our company, but also means persevering in the face of adversity. 
We design medical devices for those that persevere, and it's a belief we hold within ourselves. We are creating medical devices to change the statistic that 80% of the world's medical devices are made for 10% of the world's population. And we're starting to change this with one product, with Hemafuse, that can, with a simple push and pull of the handle, can salvage and recycle a person's own blood. But more than that, we're creating a system to introduce medical devices and commercialize them with and for emerging markets. We believe in a great opportunity for investment and an opportunity to enable doctors to save millions of lives. Hello, I'm Karen Murina, CEO and co-founder of CSU Global. And I'm very honored to be receiving such an important award as Patents for Humanity. Once again, I'm reminded of the impact of CSU Global's flagship product, Hemafuse, as we bring the age-old method of autotransfusion to new markets in a way that is safer and more effective for clinicians and patients. Hemafuse has potential to alleviate the global blood shortage by enabling clinicians to use a patient's own blood to save them for cases of internal bleeding. I'd like to thank Patents for Humanity for recognizing our successes and legacy of innovation. And I'd like to thank the hospitals and clinicians who have used our device. They believe in CC's technology and to helping make it a standard of care. This is just the beginning, and I look forward to bringing this patent for humanity to the world. A great big congratulations to all the winners of the 2020 Patents for Humanities Award. This is a very important program. Uh, American creators and inventors are not only a driving force behind your economy, their work product often helps to make the world a better place, and rightly so. So, we need to encourage this kind of creativity and innovation to meet the humanitarian challenges that we face today. The Patent and Trademark Office's Patents for Humanity program rewards innovators for using their talents to help individuals and communities in need, and they do it across the globe. I've been a longtime supporter of the Patents for Humanities program, and in fact, have introduced a bill with my colleague from Vermont, Senator Leahy, to enhance the incentives under the program. I look forward to seeing all the continued good that comes from this initiative. It's an honor to be part of this event today and join the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office in honoring these innovators and inventors. Present circumstances have made it harder to celebrate awardees or accomplishments like this, but it has never been more important to come together and make their achievements known. Our two agencies have different missions, but we share a similar goal. We seek to enhance the well being of the nation through discovery, innovation, and invention. Throughout my career, I have admired the vital role that the USPTO plays in American competitiveness. So I'm especially excited to be a part of the USPTO National Council for Expanding American Innovation. I am excited for our opportunities to work together to advance creativity and ingenuity throughout the nation. The United States has demonstrated how fostering discovery and invention can support a robust economy, enable life-saving medical breakthroughs, and enhance the way people live their lives every day. NSF and PTO are key partners in that work. Patents for Humanity is an important part of that legacy. As engineers and inventors, we seek out problems to solve, and there are a wide range of challenges. How can a system be made more efficient? How can a complex technical apparatus be simplified? How can we create something new that makes our jobs easier. But there are no questions more profound for an inventor than how can we help people live their lives more fully. Through your work, people and communities around the world are able to address their most pressing challenges and achieve the stability they need to grow. As a scientist, engineer, and an inventor myself, I'm inspired by the accomplishments of today's awardees. Congratulations to all of you. 
Vision is one of our most important senses and one of the primary ways we experience the world. But poor vision is a roadblock that inhibits education and quality of life for many people around the world who don't have access to eyeglasses or optometrists. Global Vision 2020 was founded by J. Kevin White, a US Marine and Naval Academy graduate to create a way for people to get access to prescription eyeglasses by creating an easy to use lightweight kit for testing vision and assembling eyeglasses Global Vision 2020 has delivered more than 50,000 pairs of prescription eyeglasses in 48 countries around the world. Congratulations on a tremendous achievement that is making a difference in people's lives. In 2005, as a U.S. Marine, I was in charge of the humanitarian assistance missions for the Department of Defense in both Africa and Eastern Europe. On my first mission in rural Morocco, I was made aware of the unmet need for eyeglasses in these communities. As a wearer of eyeglasses since the age of seven, I understood that my life would be completely different if not for this 700-year-old invention. Yet even with this awareness, I never thought about how eyeglasses could be distributed in the developing world, or even if this was an issue that affected large portions of these populations. Come to find out, poor vision caused by refractive error is the world's largest unmet disability, and it affects more than 1 billion people and costs the global economy over $227 billion every year from lost productivity. The biggest barrier to solving this problem are access to the networks that can deliver eyeglasses and the cost of both the exam and the eyeglasses themselves. In the developed world, there is approximately one eye health professional for every 8,000 people. In much of the developing world, those numbers are closer to one per one million. After I retired from the Marine Corps, I stayed involved in this mission, but overcoming these two barriers, access and cost, became my obsession. That is when I came up with this concept of the UC Vision System. But making a complex medical diagnostic tool in one garage was not a map to success. With the help of ophthalmologists at Johns Hopkins and optometrists at the New England College of Optometry, we moved through clinical and field trials that proved the system worked. And with the help of the designers and plastics production specialists at Avian and IQ Design, we took the UC through production development and design all the way to production. And the way it works couldn't be simpler. First, you determine, does the patient need eyeglasses by administering a simple vision test? If they do have poor vision, the UC is used to find the correct prescription. By dialing the variable power lens in front of their own eye, the patient naturally finds the correct power of lens, much like a pair of binoculars. Once their vision is corrected and verified, the color-coded system indicates the required lens for each eye. By simply snapping in the appropriate lens into the left and right sides, the patient can be provided a pair of custom prescription eyeglasses in minutes. With this system, it is now possible for almost every network to learn the skills necessary to screen for refractive error and solve the issue anywhere in the world for less than $5 per patient. To date, we have worked with over 45 different organizations in 50 countries, supplying over 50,000 pairs of eyeglasses to patients who have never had a pair of eyeglasses before. These include programs in Central and South America, Asia, and Africa. They have delivered eyeglasses to students in schools and the elderly in their villages to women who sew, and men who drive for a living, who are losing business due to their deteriorating eyesight. Poor vision affects almost every aspect of one's life. Education, productivity, quality of life, and the tools that correct it have been around for centuries. It is now possible for us to solve this for the one billion people that still cannot see clearly. Please visit us at gv2020.org for more information. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kevin White, Executive Director of Global Vision 2020 and the inventor of the UC. I am honored to be a recipient of one of the 2020 Patent for Humanity Awards. Over the years, this award has been given to inventors and organizations that have changed the lives of billions, whether it's easier kidney dialysis or vaccine transportation systems. Advancement across all sectors have been recognized and highlighted by this unique award. But like all of the past winners, I could not have gotten here without the help of a lot of great people and outstanding organizations. First, I'd like to thank the team at Aviant and IQ Design, Kathy Dodd, Michelle Maniscalco, John Hornicle, Michael Sandbrook, Brian Everett, James Bukowski, and their colleagues, as well as Melissa Combs, the patent attorney at Lee and Hayes. Of course, none of this would have been possible without the love and continued support of my family, Rebecca, my wife, and my sons, Owen and Oliver. On behalf of the team of Global Vision 2020, thank you so much for this recognition.
In the category for living standards, I'm pleased to announce that the winner is non-spec. For more than 54 million amputees around the world, prosthetic limbs are critical tools for enhancing their quality of life. But the process of designing and fitting a prosthetic to meet a person's individual needs can be complicated and time consuming, requiring numerous visits to specialists for adjustment. Non-spec has changed that. Their adjustable prosthetic limb is an off-the-shelf product that can be aligned in under an hour to the exact specifications a person needs to go about their day comfortably. It's designed to be durable, lightweight, and affordable. Non-spec product has been used in India, Rwanda, the Philippines, and with charities in the United Kingdom. Congratulations on the award. It is well-deserved for this wonderful work. Nonspec makes affordable and adjustable prosthetic limb kits, which we sell to clinics all over the world. We do this because the clinics that we work with fundamentally don't have the time or the resources to fit all the patients that they have, and we believe that every amputee deserves a chance to walk again. There are over 54 million amputees worldwide and a new amputee every 30 seconds. If someone can afford the thousands of dollars to get a prosthetic, it still takes an average of two years to receive a limb with up to 12 additional adjustment appointments until it is finally comfortable. This is a huge problem for many patients as it means that they spend a lot of time out of work and unable to do the things that they love. The first woman who ever worked with us was actually a nurse in the clinic that we were doing our early stage clinical trials. She came to us and she told us that after losing her leg, she was unable to perform her normal duties and she just wanted to be able to go back to normal. She was one of the first patients that we fit with our device and she made us realize that there had to be a better way to make these components. Nonspec makes an off-the-shelf kit that can be adjusted in under an hour to any amputee. Our standardization means that we can fit an eight-year-old and an 80-year-old with the same components. This allows us to keep our costs low and our quality high. In fact, we are the only prosthetic at our price point that meets world durability standards. Because we designed one device that fits everyone, we're able to leverage economies of scale in our production, which means that our device can be sustainable in effectively any market. This has allowed us to form teams on the ground in regions that were previously considered inaccessible. Over the last five years, we have designed and tested our product on the ground with amputees and clinicians in order to ensure that we meet their needs at every turn. Our team leverages our manufacturing skills to make sure that we can rapidly prototype and adjust to the market needs. We have deployed our product in India and have trained clinicians from every prosthetic clinic in Rwanda. We additionally have partnerships in the Philippines, Mauritius, Haiti, China, as well as in the EU. And the patients that we fit have all been able to go on and live better lives. That patient I mentioned earlier, she still texts us, telling us how she was able to walk her daughter to school and play soccer with her son. And she gets so excited to share the little victories that she has every day because she can walk and move comfortably. With your help, we can create a world where every amputee has access to the devices they need. Thank you so much for awarding us the Patent for Humanities Award. It is incredibly validating, especially as a small company, to be able to share our story on a national stage. We've been working for years to make a product that will help people in developing countries and globally have access to something that is truly a human right. We realized as we were doing this that our technology is at its best when it's quiet in the background. We joke pretty often, unfortunately, that the, most, the highest compliment that we can receive for our devices is, is that it's forgotten by the wearer and that they can just go about their lives in a normal day-to-day -day, uh, process. With your help, we're now able to reach even more people. And that means the world to us because it means that we're able to spread these to places where traditionally we couldn't access them. And we can't thank you enough for that opportunity. Hi everyone, I'm Martha Roby, and I have the honor of serving the people of Alabama's second congressional district in the House of Representatives. I hope you have all stayed healthy and safe throughout the course of this pandemic. Although we cannot be together in person to celebrate the Patents for Humanity Awards, I'm grateful we have access to technology that allows us the opportunity to virtually commemorate these wonderful inventors. I want to congratulate each of the winners and honorable mentions for receiving this significant recognition. Your hard work and determination to not only address humanitarian challenges, 
but provides solutions to overcome those challenges is truly remarkable. Each of you here tonight provides inspiration and motivation for inventors across the country to act on their ideas and express their creativity. I'm honored to have the opportunity to serve as ranking member on the House Judiciary Committee's Subcommittee on Courts, Intellectual Property, and the Internet, where I'm in a unique position to advocate for patent policies that contribute to our economy and culture. Strong protections put in place by our government are critical to safeguard the innovative ideas of the American people, ultimately stimulating innovation, fueling economic growth, and building stronger communities. Again, congratulations to each of you on receiving this impressive award, and thank you for having me here tonight to celebrate with you all. I am confident that your actions and ingenuity for the good of all people will continue to advance the American creative industry. Hello, my name is Carol Dahl, and I'm Executive Director at the Lummelson Foundation, a foundation dedicated to improving lives through invention. It's my honor to be part of the USPTO Patents for Humanity Award Ceremony, and I congratulate all of the inventors who are being recognized here today. Your work is so inspiring, and it shines a light on the importance of invention in addressing societal challenges while creating economic opportunity. As this awards program highlights, there's nothing more powerful than channeling of the human inventive spirit towards our greatest humanitarian challenges. It truly defines improving lives through invention. Some of you may not be familiar with the Lummelson Foundation. We're a private family foundation based in Portland, Oregon. We were founded over 25 years ago by Jerome Lummelson and his wife, Dorothy. Jerome, or Jerry, was one of the most prolific inventors of the last century with over 600 patents to his name. He believed in the power of invention and saw the potential for changing lives through invention. He also recognized that the strength of the U.S. economy had been built through invention and that for future prosperity to continue, we need to continue to recognize and celebrate inventors and inventions, as well as nurture the next generation of inventors and their ideas. At the Lemelson Foundation, we focus on something we like to call impact inventing, which is well aligned with the Patents for Humanity program. Impact inventing means that you target problems that we think of as problems worth solving. So three core tenets to impact inventing. The first is that the problems you're working on will result in positive social impact. The second is that the inventions are created in a way that they will minimize their negative impact on the environment and maintain the health of the planet, so environmentally responsible inventions. And the third is that those inventions will in fact turn into products that can be financially self-sustaining because the best way we know right now for products to reach people with impact is through business. At the Lemelson Foundation, we also choose to focus on products and inventions that are physical, because we believe that many of the greatest challenges yet to be solved will require more than software. We also recognize that those inventors and entrepreneurs face additional challenges and have a longer path to market, from prototype to manufacturing to dissemination. As we think about major problems worth solving, we recognize that sanitation is one of the great challenges left today. It's estimated in 2018, as you heard in the introduction, that over 2.3 billion people did not have access to hygienic sanitation. Poor sanitation results in many health problems through the spread of infectious diseases, as well as limits economic and social development. The World Health Organization has estimated that over 430,000 deaths can be attributed each year to contributions from poor sanitation. Clearly, if we could create affordable, appropriate, and hygienic sanitation for every member of our human population on this planet, that would be addressing a problem worth solving. 
I'm pleased to present the first winning team in the sanitation category led by Dr. Daniel Ye from the University of South Florida. The team's new generator product is a compact, decentralized solution for treating sanitation wastewater on a neighborhood scale, eliminating the need for sanitation infrastructure such as sewers. Through the use of state-of-the-art membrane technology, this solar-powered device actually eliminates pathogens and methane while capturing water and nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, all while generating renewable energy. Congratulations to Dr. Ye and the new generator team. For you and I, right, we deal with one of our daily needs, which is the need to go to the bathroom um, in a very convenient way, which means you go to the toilet, you flush, and you forget about it. And the reason you're able to forget about it is that it actually the waste that you deposit it goes into a massive underground sewer network, which is then connected to a municipal wastewater treatment plant. Think of it as a massive factory that turns the wastewater into clean water. And we're able to do that really well uh, here in the United States because we have the ability to invest in the capital, uh, in the infrastructure uh, to make that happen. But for many parts of the world, uh, that is simply not a reality yet. Uh, we have you know, close to 3 billion people on the planet who are struggling with the lack of daily adequate sanitation needs. And that not only robs people of their dignity, but it's a tremendous health hazard. So we need to solve this, and we need to solve this not with 20th, 20th century solutions, but we need to solve this with 21st century solutions. Uh, so what we need to do is to be able to come up with a sanitation platform that is completely off the grid. Also, we need to think of waste not as waste, but really as a resource, right? It's a recurring renewable resource that we can um, recover uh, clean water, energy, and nutrients from that. And that can basically help us create a circular economy where we essentially tr deal with the problem and recycle everything and provide a renewable resource for communities. So for me, it's been a fascinating journey. Uh, I started as an undergraduate research assistant within the lab. And I've been able to see the technology go from just a proof of concept all the way into a fully integrated system and one that's ready for commercialization. So for me, uh, it's been really rewarding to see the technology grow as I grew as a, as a researcher and to see it go from a state of just a, a concept all the way to something that is ready for commercialization and ready to make an impact in the broader globe. Uh, globally, many communities don't have any access to reliable electricity, and so we designed our system to run entirely off of solar power so that we don't need to have electricity for our system to operate. Uh, we, we've been able to uh, license the technology out to companies in India and also South Africa who are going to manufacture them locally. In the tech transfer process, you have to have local partners worldwide who can localize and optimize the technology. Go Bulls! Go Bulls! Hello, this is Daniel Ye of Team New Generator. We're honored to receive the USPTO 2020 Patents for Humanity Award for our contributions to global sanitation. Over the past 15 years at the University of South Florida, I've had the pleasure to work with so many amazing students and postdocs who share the passion and vision of developing new technologies to help address the global sanitation crisis. We thank the College of Engineering, USF Research and Innovation, University Communications and Marketing, and others at USF for supporting us on this journey. Many global partners were critical to our success, in particular in India, Iram Scientific Solutions and BIRAC, and in South Africa, PRG at the University of KwaZulu-Natal, Kanisa Projects, Efequini Water and Sanitation, and the Water Research Commission. We thank our sponsors, NSF, US EPA, Government of India, K Museum Prize, Pentair, and most importantly, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation's Water Sanitation and Hygiene Team. Gates Foundation set out to reinvent the toilet by developing transformative sanitation technologies that can operate without sewers. We are honored to be part of this monumental effort. Thank you again to USPTO for recognizing our work. There is still so much to do, but we are optimistic that innovation will continue to make a better world for all of humanity. 
And now I'm pleased to present the second winning team in the sanitation category led by Dr. Francis de los Reyes III from North Carolina State University. They invented the flex curvator machine. Pit latrines are used by approximately 1.8 billion people around the world. These latrines often fill up quickly with both human waste and garbage. Because traditional vacuum trucks can't handle the high volumes of garbage, emptying these latrines requires using shovels and buckets, a dangerous job that exposes workers to a host of pathogens. The team's flex excavator device delivers a mechanized and therefore faster and more hygienic approach to cleaning out pit latrines of both fecal sludge and garbage. Congratulations to Dr. Delis Reyes and the flex excavator team. Hello, my name is Francis de los Reyes, professor of environmental engineering at North Carolina State University and lead investigator of the Flex Curvator project. We live in a modern world of high technology and yet billions of people still face a basic challenge every day. Where to go when they have to go? Most people in the world don't have toilets inside their houses connected to a sewer line that takes their wastes away. 1.8 billion people use pit latrines or septic tanks. And when these latrines and tanks become full, they have to be emptied. Unfortunately today, most of these pits are still emptied manually. That means workers often have to go inside the pits using buckets and shovels. This is an unsanitary, unsafe, undignified practice. The other method is to use vacuum trucks but these are expensive and cannot reach all the pit latrines in dense or out-of-the-way areas. We started working on developing a pit emptying machine in 2011 in response to a Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation challenge. The very first designs came from an undergraduate senior design project and one of them was initially funded by the Gates Foundation. Our goal was a machine that was affordable and can empty those pits that can't be accessed because they were out of the way. What was initially thought to be a simple task of moving viscous human waste from a pit to above the ground actually became quite a big challenge. With every new prototype and every test campaign in South Africa, India, Malawi, we found problems with our prototype and we had to keep admitting our failures and solving each challenge. One of the main issues is that in these pit latrines are huge volumes of trash. Plastic bags, clothes, hygiene products, bottles, almost anything and the, and the trash blocks the pipes. Uh, we went through so much trial and error in lab tests and field tests in Malawi, Zambia, and Kenya, and we developed the flex excavator with a trash excluder. The flex excavator is a portable vacuum system that allows pumping of fecal sludge to a tank that can then transfer the contents to roadside tanks or barrels. The closed system means workers do not need to manually scoop out sludge, but minimize contact with the fecal material. The trash excluder is an active screen that can be attached to the end of the flex excavator, or a vacuum truck, or a, a modified cheaper pump truck system that you can actually design. A screen blocks trash from going inside the tube, and an outside auger continuously rotates and keeps the screen clear of the trash that may clog the screen. So today, we are working with partners in Madagascar and Ghana to continuously test the performance and get actual business data. We are looking for partners who can help manufacture and distribute the machine. Our hope is that the flex excavator and trash excluder can be the basis for successful, sustainable businesses and communities in many countries. And our hope is to eliminate manual emptying completely and also making this a dignified profession. Thank you. This is a big honor for us 
and we are grateful to the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office for this wonderful Patents for Humanity Award. This represents not only recognition of the work over many years, but also highlights the importance of the problems in global sanitation, and in particular, providing services to the most underserved communities in the world. On behalf of my co-inventors, Tate Rogers, who had the initial idea, and Walt Beckwith, who has been there since the very early days, and our entire Flexcurator team, including Jocelyn Sai, our coordinator. I would like to thank all our partners, Triangle Environmental, Catapult Design, especially Noel Wilson and Payen Olimoyoy, John Shaw and Associates, and our program manager at the Gates Foundation, Sun Kim. We are thankful to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for believing in us and providing funding. Thank you to the RELX Challenge. Thank you again to the USPTO. We are grateful, we are humbled, and we intend to keep making this technology better. Hello everyone, and thank you to all of you who have joined us here today, including Senators Leahy and Grassley, Representative Roby, Dr. Panchanathan, Ms. Dahl, and Mr. Oyster in celebration of innovation. And once more, congratulations to the winners. In addition to the companies already mentioned, I would like to make a special note of two that have won an honorable mention. Rubitection for their creation of a medical device that detects early stage bed sores and improves quality of care and of life for those who are bedridden. And Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory for their creation of an infant warming indicator that can help infants maintain a stable, normal body temperature when the maternal skin-to-skin -skin care isn't possible. I am truly impressed by these brilliant inventors and their life-changing creations. As we go forward, I urge you to remember the words of American philosopher Ralph Waldo Emerson. Do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. With your innovations, you have already begun blazing the trail that will build a brighter future for all of us. Thank you for your dedication to making life better, and thank you for joining us here today.